This video will be on uh, maximizing the volume of a box. And really what this falls under is uh, polynomial word problems because we are going to create a polynomial uh, in order to um, in order to uh, solve this problem. Now, real quick, it, it needs to be understood what the box is going to look like because we're going to draw a picture for this. So if I create a rectangular piece of paper, let's say that that's what this is. Now, if I want to make a box, what I want to do is I want to be able to cut out four equal squares from the corners so that when I cut out these squares, then I could fold the box into a shape that looks like this. You know, the hope is that I can draw a three-dimensional shape. But if you're picturing it, then I would fold it up. Once I cut out the squares, I would fold it up, and it would have an open top, basically. But still, I want to create a box that would have a maximum volume. So based off of something that has a certain length and a certain width, and what you cut out when you think about uh, folding up a side, um, this would be the height, uh, so the height, and then this would be the length, and then this part's the width. I want to create the volume, the uh, or uh, I want to create a box that would have the maximum volume so I could fit the most amount of stuff in there. So the volume would equal length times width times height. And that's how we're going to find this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a polynomial function. Uh, and I have the problem from the study guide uh, that we did. And so here it is. It says, suppose that a piece of cardboard, uh, whoops, uh, suppose that a piece of cardboard, um, crazy, uh, suppose that a piece of cardboard is 45 centimeters wide and 65 or 60 centimeters long, how much should you cut from the corners to form a box with a maximum volume? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture of our piece of cardboard. So here's your rectangle. And then I'm going to draw in the places where I would cut um, along from the corners. So I'm going to cut something from there and from there. I'm going to cut from there. And those four corners is where I'm going to cut. And so let's label this. We said it's 45 centimeters wide is the cardboard. And we know that it's 60 centimeters long. And what we're going to do is uh, we need to define a variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let x be the height. And the reason I want x to be the height is because it'll make my life easier because I'm going to write the length and width in terms of x. So all of these, these squares, they're all x, right? So when I cut out my squares, they uh, should all be the same length. I'm cutting the same amount out from each side. And so what we want to do now is we want to write um, something in terms of the length and some uh, an expression for the width as well. So for the length, let's take a look over here. So we know that from here to here is 60 centimeters. But when I take away this x and this x, um, I'll no longer have 60 centimeters. I'll have 60 centimeters minus 2x because I'm taking away two of the x's. So the length of the box will be 60 minus 2x. For the width, it will be very similar because when I take away um, this x and this x from the 45, we will have 45 minus 2x. And so uh, the height of the box uh, will be uh, x the length will be 60 minus 2x, and the width will be 45 minus 2x. And what we're going to do after that is we're going to create a function. Because if you look in the create a function for the volume, okay? Uh, to create a function for the volume, the reason we want to do this is because it says we want to create a maximum volume. Uh, you could actually pick any x value um, that sits fits the situation, uh, but 
it may not give you the maximum volume. So by creating a function, it allows us to see all the possible volumes, and then we can find the highest one or the biggest one. Um, so the volume is found by doing length times width times height. And what we're going to do is we're going to do V equals, and we're going to substitute in what the length is. So that's 60 minus 2x, and then 45 minus 2x, and then uh, x is our height. So uh, there it is. There's our polynomial. Uh, we're not going to multiply that out. Uh, we're just going to plug this function into our calculator, and we're going to find the relative maximum, and that will uh, be it. So we're going to graph this. Uh, I'm going to graph that function, and I'm looking for the relative maximum. Now, uh, we have to make sure that we find the relative maximum, uh, because that will be our solution. So if you have a calculator, you should be taking out your calculator because that's what I'm doing. Even though you can't see me, um, I'm going to open up a new document and add a graph. And so hmm, I'm going to put in 60 minus 2x times 45 minus 2x. times x. And so once you've got that in your calculator, you can hit graph or enter. Now the truth of the matter is on mine it didn't even show up because I have to change the window. And so by changing the window, I go to window settings and think about what x, the x minimum and the x maximum would have to be. My x minimum, I'm going to make zero because I can't have a height that's negative. It wouldn't make any sense to have a box with a negative amount of centimeters. Then I'm going to look and see what are my other x-intercepts. Not only is zero my x-intercept here, but this one looks like it would be 22.5, and this one looks like it would be 30. Now, I'm going to go and say that the relative maximum is in between my two smaller x-intercepts, and so that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to make my x max uh, if you're using your calculator, my x max would be uh, probably 25. And then I'm going to be 100% honest and I'm going to say that the y max is going to have to be probably something pretty big. So I'm just going to pick 2,000. I'm going to shoot for the stars and see what happens. So now my y max is 2,000 and I'm going to hit enter. Uh, on my calculator, it didn't even show up, the maximum. So it's way bigger than that. So let's go with 10,000. So I'm going to go back to my window settings, and I'm going to go with 10,000, because I'm just picking a really big number for my Y maximum. So 10,000, I'm going to pray that this works. Oh, 10,000 doesn't even work. All right, uh, maybe a little bit more, like 12,000, and we'll be good. So uh, it's just guess and check on your X, on your Y max. So until you can see the whole curve. So 12,000 it is. I can see it. And now I'm going to find the maximum using my calculator. However, uh, you're going to use your calculator's function to find the maximum. So to the left and to the right of it, since I have an inspire. And there we go. And so as I look at my point, I'm going to write it down for you. My relative maximum is at 8.49 comma 10,234.02. That's my relative maximum. When I find the highest point of the curve on that polynomial between the domain of 0 to 22.5, um, that would be the maximum uh, point. Now, one of the things we've been talking about in class is do we know what X and Y stand for? So uh, X stands for the height because we said let X be the height. So this is the height. Um, and then uh, 10,234 is the y value, and if you look at our function, the v was in the place of the y value, so this is our volume. So it says, how much should you cut from the corners to form the box of the maximum value uh, volume? Uh, so I would say cut 8.49 centimeters, and it would create a uh, maximum volume of 10,234 centimeters cubed. And so that is how you do 4A in the study guide uh, that I gave you. Um, I think 4B says to find the length and the width. And so I would take what X equals, that's this guy right there, 8.49, and I'm going to plug it in for X in that expression. 
and plug it in for x in that expression. All right. I uh, hope that helps, and have a great day. I'll talk to you later.